Hello and welcome to Learn Angular from the Scratch. In this series, I'm going to show you everything about Angular, starting from the basics to the advanced topics. By the end of this next 10 hour lessons, we'll build and deploy a real-time e-commerce application using Angular, Node and MongoDB. Let me show you a demo real quick. So this is an imaginary website for buying music CDs. I know all of you are extremely talented and will definitely create crazy good application in the future. But this is where it all begins. So are you excited to learn Angular and build this brand new application? Then let's jump in and get started. In case if you are an absolute beginner, then let me tell you what is Angular and why should you opt for it. Angular is an open source web application framework for building single page client side applications using HTML and JavaScript or TypeScript which eventually transpile to JavaScript. I will cover TypeScript fundamentals in my next tutorial. Many of you might have this question now that why should we use these frameworks and why not the vanilla JavaScript or plain jQuery or the code JavaScripts, right? The fact is, we can use them, but there are a bunch of reasons why these modern JavaScript frameworks are so popular. Let's take an example. Imagine we have a registration page and all we need is a mobile number as input. Once entered, we show the mobile number with a button or link to delete them, like this. Here is a vanilla JavaScript implementation of it. Clearly it takes 2 lines of code to update the state but 13 lines of code to update the UI which is the biggest problem here. Updating the UI on every state change. Along with that it is not at all readable as your project grows it will become extremely fragile and hard to maintain. Also there is no way to unit test this externally as the view and con is tightly coupled. Now we are in 2020 and we have a plethora of awesome JavaScript frameworks which are way more adaptable for building websites. Hence a majority of the web developers prefer them. Angular is one such JavaScript framework which makes working with JavaScript easier and smoother for us. An application code base in Angular is readable and neatly structured. These applications are scalable, cross-platform, fast and secure. A highly modular architecture makes it reusable and testable. This is how an Angular application works. We have a server side or backend here which mostly deals with the data or business logic to manipulate those data. Here you have database or multiple databases in certain cases under data layer, business logic, objects and uh, other workflows under business layer and finally the service interfaces and implementations under the service layer. On the contrary, the front end mostly deals with the presentation. This is where we configure the screen which the end users see in their browser. 
Along with that, how to capture their inputs, send them to the backend via HTTP or HTTP API calls, etc. To build an Angular application, the first thing you need to install is the current stable version of Node.js. Just in case if you are not familiar with Node, Node.js is an open source server environment that runs on various platforms and thanks to the V8 engine, it is capable to execute JavaScript. Once you are done with the installation, open the terminal and type node-version for a confirmation. Node.js also comes with a software registry tool called Node Package Manager or NPM. Now we'll download a third party package called Angular CLI with the help of NPM. Angular CLI is a command line interface tool which creates code scaffolding and deployable Angular package. npm install at angular CLI and use hyphen g to install the package globally. So if you remove this hyphen G option, it is going to be installed only in your current folder. It will take some time to install. Next, we'll create a project with some boilerplate code using Angular CLI. Then use ng new command to create your new project. So I'm giving a new project name as Quarantine shop. It basically downloads a bunch of code and their corresponding third party dependencies. We'll use VS Code Editor for our development, but you are free to choose any editor of your choice. It can be Atom, Sublime, anything. Okay, now let's see how our boilerplate application appears in the development server. So as you can see, we have a node server listening to the default port number 4200. During this phase, your HTML, your TypeScript code is converted into efficient JavaScript code before the browser downloads and runs that code. So the application is up and running fine now in our local host. Let me open the VS code and explain you the folder structure. E2 stands for end-to-end. -end. This is where we should write our end-to-end -end test cases. What that means is we can simulate a real-world user here to see whether our app is working as per expectation or not node modules so this is where all our third party dependencies will be stored including the angular specific libraries as well during the development we should never tamper these files as their version is maintained in the online repositories like npm and others we will not explicitly commit these folders into the server as well. Rather, once development is done, these files will be put together to form the vendor chunk during the process by Angular CLI. SRC. So this is the folder which contains the main code files related to your Angular application. Let's go inside it. App folder. Any application should contain at least one module and one component. We'll get to know more about them soon. Asset folder. This folder is a placeholder for the resource files which are used in the application such as images, locals, translations, etc. Environments folder. The environments folder is used to hold the environment configuration constants building the Angular application. The constants are defined in two separate TS files. 
one is environment.ts and the other one is environment.prod.ts. These constants are again used in the Angular JSON file by the Angular CLI. For example, if you run the ng build command, it will build the application using the development environment settings, whereas the command ng build prod will build the project using the production environment settings. Other important file includes favorite icon. So this file specifies a small icon that appears next to the browser tab of a website index.html. This is the entry file which holds the high level container for the Angular application. main.ts so, as defined in Angular JSON file, this is the main.ts file that will first run. This file bootstraps the app module from the app module.ts and it can be used to define global configurations as well. Polyfill. This file is a set of code that can be used to provide compatibility support for the older browser. Angular 10 is written mainly in ES6 plus language specification, which is getting more adopted in front-end development. So, since not all browsers support the full ES6 plus specifications, polyfills can be used to cover whatever feature is missing from a given browser. Going forward, test.ts is the main test file that the angular cli command ngtest will use. Now browser list, this file is used by the auto prefixer that adjusts the CSS to support a list of defined browsers. Editor config, this is a simple file which is used to maintain the consistency in code editors to organize some basic such as indentation, white spaces, etc. So in an organization, you would always want all your resources to follow the configuration. So this is where you should enter all your editor configurations. Okay. Now going forward, git ignore. This file is related to the source control git and you can ignore it if you are not using git. Angular JSON. So it is very important configuration file related to your Angular application. It defines the structure of your app and includes any settings associated with your application. Here you can specify environments on this file like development or production. External JS, CSS, these kind of imports you can do here only. One example of it is bootstrap. We'll start using this file very soon. Okay, now karma config. This file specifies the config file for the karma test runner. Package.json. So this is npm configuration file. It includes details about your package dependencies along with details about your own website being a package itself. tsconfig.json. This is a TypeScript compiler configuration file. For the most part, you don't have to tamper this TypeScript settings. But in case if it is required, now you know where to do that. Now tsapp.json. This is used to overwrite the tsconfig.json file with the application specific configurations. Going forward, we have tsconfig specification JSON. This basically overrides the tsconfig.json file with app specific unit testing configurations. Understood? So last but not the least, tslint.json. So it has a number of settings for tslint. In case if you don't know, tslint is a static analysis tool for the TypeScript. It basically checks your TypeScript code for readability, maintainability and compilation errors. Okay, after all this, now let's make some change in your application and see whether it reflects in the browser or not.
Awesome. We have replaced all our boilerplate template codes from the app component and successfully replaced it with a test heading. Now there are a few things to notice here. Since we modified the app, our Angular CLI using its intelligence rendered only the main bundle here. Had it been a style sheet change, then automatically the styles bundle would have been rendered. But who does that? Before going into that, the .mat files are created by the TypeScript compiler. This is used for debugging the application in the runtime. Now getting back to the same discussion, Angular builds our application using a build automation tool called Webpack. And this Webpack has a feature called Hot Module Replacement. So without getting into too much details, in simple words, Hot Module Replacement allows all kinds of modules to be updated at runtime without the need of a full refresh. One last thing before we wind up this session, how to manually bootstrap your Angular application. Basically, four files play a key role in bootstrapping any Angular application. As I already told you, AngularJSON holds the CLI configuration. Here you can find a key called main that holds the path for the main TS file. Application opens this main file and locates the bootstrap module. As shown in the screen, Platform Browser Dynamic first creates a platform and then the Bootstrap module creates the application instance. When the application is being created, Angular checks the Bootstrap property of the module used to bootstrap the application. This property usually references the component you want to bootstrap the application with. Finally, Angular finds the element that is the selector of the bootstrap component in the DOM and initializes the component. Great. So if you have learned something new today, then please hit that like button and subscribe to this channel. Also, do let me know your feedback in the comment section below. Thank you.